Landscape Artist of the Year, Season 5, Episode 2. This is a recap. If you want to watch the whole program, you can go to YouTube and then search for Landscape Artist of the Year, Season 5, Episode 2. You will not find these on Prime Video. Prime Video dropped the series for some reason. All right, let's get started. And please leave me a thumbs up and subscribe. Thumbs up, thumbs up, yay! YouTube loves a thumbs up, and I do too. Now, where we are today is Hearst Monsu Observatory. This is a fascinating place, and I'm so glad that I wasn't on this episode because look at this. First, we get our drone shot. We always have to have a drone shot, right? Look at this place. It's an observatory, and then it has these orbs that are on the lawn, and on the bottom left-hand side of the slide, you can see where the uh, little pods are set up for the painters. What a compositional nightmare <laughs> this is to me. Oh my goodness. There's so many shapes. There's so much to consider. It's just not conventional in any way. So I wouldn't be able to be here and say, oh, okay, I've done this before. I know this. These shapes, not that we haven't done, you know, in the end, everything's a circle square or a, uh, a rectangle, but, but this is just so odd and you got to do something with it just re representing it is not going to carry the day. So there you can see the vista from the pods. This is what you have to work with. Oh, it just gives me the willies. All right, so our f the artists, in order to be on the program, have to submit a landscape, and that's how they're judged to be on. This is the first one up. I really like this landscape. It's it's so fresh. It's so cheerful. It it has a little bit of impressionism and a little, you know, also reminds me a little bit of a Van Gogh. You probably know the painting too, the one, you know, with a boat as it's going under the, under the open bridge. It just has all those same shapes and, and gestures, um, but mm, certainly more conventionally colored than what Van Gogh did. But um, uh, I think it's delightful. Look at that diagonal. Ooh, really need that. This Now, because I'm taking these from YouTube, it's much harder to get a good resolution. So hang on, because I'm going to show you a, a, a close-up of, of what he submitted so we can get a better view. And remember, landscape isn't just beautiful lawns and hills. Landscape can be industrial, too. So that's what he did. It's quite complex and looks like a construction site of some kind. So that's our second contestant. I'm not sure of the medium. Yeah, I am. I'm sure it's it's either an oil or an acrylic. Like it, it's used very similar to watercolor, but it's not. Love this one. I've been accused in these um, recaps of, of choosing paintings that are pretty. And I have to admit, I am looking at them as if I was going to put them in my home. Of course, these are going to end up, you know, final commission will be on a gallery wall. But yeah, I like pretty pictures. <laughs> I like to paint pretty pictures. I like to consume pretty pictures, but uh, I am guilty as charged. And that's obviously not the point of the program. The point of the program is to have a lot of varied voices. But look at look at those distant hills and how diffused that light is back there. I think that is just really, that's a lot of observation. This is very interesting, isn't it? Very geographic and yet really, really effective. Yeah, we... This is something we have not seen on the program before. So I thought the judges would honor this since they seem to like new voices and, and new ways of seeing things. But uh, we'll, we'll find out later whether they do or they don't. I, it, it makes me think that she must be a graphic designer of some kind. But uh, I, I enjoy this a lot. Um, I would take out the balloon. I like it better without the balloon. Oh boy. Oh, okay. This is the kind of painting I'm, I'm uh, like I said, accused of liking. Yes, I really, really like uh, pictures that are quite beautiful to my eye. So those are our contestants. So, oh no, we still have, I think we still have a couple more. Let's see. Oh no, this is, I had a longer slide of this one for some reason. Okay, I just remembered why I have a longer slide of this one. It's because I downloaded these images over a week ago and I had forgotten that I've edited it so that we can see the person holding their, the picture they submitted as well as their submission and, and that this is her submission. Once again, this is the artist looking through an, in, an industrial framing of some kind and then onto the vista behind. Really love that device and I think he uses it very, very well. And now we'll get a close-up of the submission. Yeah, it's even more effective in the close-up. 
Look at the mist coming up from the hills. Really, really beautiful. No color value swap outs, but it, it really works. I mean, there's a little spot. He's using some orange in his mixes. That's helping a lot with those greens. So it's really nicely done. Leans toward warm green as opposed to um, going into, um, into red, which is interesting. Here's the next one up. Uh, I, I love this. The reason I love this is because I've tried to do this kind of lighting on a Vista. I live in a place that's very similar to this in, in some ways, and I'm never able to do it. I'm not able to capture the light on those far, far hills the way he did. I, this is so very carefully observed that I'm, I'm very curious to see what he does today. And as you can see, when we pull back, he has a figure in the foreground. Just... I, you know, I'm speechless because this is just so incredible, such an incredible piece. And then this one as well, which is um, a waterfall, of course, which means um, nothing other than you're going to have a lot of contrast between your lights and your darks when you're dealing with, um, when you're going all the way from white. Not that this is white. I'm sure the water isn't white. I'm sure it's he's mixed a lot of gray in there. But um, you have a very broad value range in this. So what I'm getting from this is that these, these painters have been out in the field a lot, most of them. It really seems that they've carefully observed the landscape. They have a feel for it. And I think it's going to be a great episode. I sure hope so. I'm sure the outcome will disappoint me because it nearly always does. But that doesn't mean I don't enjoy the episode anyway. We can still, we're along for the ride. It's about the art, not about the outcome. Now, let's take a look at the judging as it begins. They've had four hours today. Now they really have five if they don't stop for lunch, but that's a lot of concentration. And remember, you can you can tell it was a cold day, so your hands and feet are gonna be kind of cold. Here's the first one up. Fantastic. Wow, wow, wow. Look at those orbs. Uh, it just compositionally, everything about this just ticks all the boxes for me. I just think this is, this is, you know, this is what I described as, you know, you came, you showed up, you conquered. You, you, you did exactly what they asked you to do, which means they probably will completely dismiss you because <laughs> they kind of, they're kind of that way. But, um, but I don't dismiss it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Those greens balanced with the oranges and the reds. Oh, just fantastic. What, how tempting it would have been. Wow, how tempting. Well, no, there it is on the orb, the purple. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Going into the purple, it, it would just bring more of that color value swap out thing going on. Because of course the sky wasn't purple, and that isn't necessarily violet or purple. It's 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 all it's all really a, a study in, in grays. I wanted to pull away so we could see the size. Because I think that's kind of important. Not necessarily for today. But the final commission is going to go on a gallery wall, so pieces have to read from far away. Now, the person who gets the commission is going to have a certain size, and it's going to be a large size that they're going to have to deal with. So here's the exact same scene, pretty much. Very different coloration, and much more true to what the day was. The day was flat. You had a flat gray sky and, you know, no shadows at all. I'm, there were a lot of reflections, but no shadows which is a real challenge for a landscape painter. But I think this person did an equally beautiful job. Really nice. Let's take a close up. Yeah, once again, using those greens and reds. This is a, this is a lot of great color mixing of greens with reds. And of course, um, I'm not sure what yellow they would have used for to make. I'm, 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 I'm assuming that they all mixed their greens because I don't think in my um, experience anyway, and my experience is watercolor. I, I don't have these greens in a tube. I have no greens in a tube. I, I mix all my greens. All right, here's the next one up. Much looser and freer um, and has more of a feel of maybe what the, uh, the day would have been. Breezy, cold. It doesn't have the same depth that the other ones do. Certainly carries the reflections, so that's taken care of. It's such a unique setting. Look at this close up. Oh, color spot of value. Look at that spot, that yellowish orange spot. That is, that's what brings a painting to life for me. You know, it's when you see that moment, if you can capture that moment, doesn't mean that you know what color it is, but you can sort of tell your brain, I see something, I don't know what it is, but it's warm or it's cold, and then answer the call. And if you call correctly, oh, 
gosh, your painting will just sing. There's a close-up of one of the reflective balls. What I like here is just sort of how expressive the brush strokes are. Ah, this fella. I think this is a fella that did that Distant Hill one that I like so much. I, I'm pretty much, yeah, it's got to be. It's the same kind of style. Very, very quiet. Very, very studied. But a lot of spaces established here. And the use of diagonals. It's so smart to use diagonals in a landscape which is mostly horizontal. And also something that has a lot of um, rounded dome shapes. You don't want to have necessarily a curve in there. You need some contrast. And look at that sky. Very carefully done. Ooh, that is, that is just such beautiful work. He's not a colorist, but he is a very careful maker of forms. And he did a long, thin format. So he, you know, this is, this is the problem in this setting, is that you cannot do the whole thing. You've got to cut it up into little pieces, and everyone's going to decide which pieces they're going to do. Here's the next one up. Um, <laughs> there's your diagonal. You need that diagonal to get back into space there. Really nice use of the orange against the green to establish the base of that dome, and the reflective... Um, orbs are picking up light really nicely. Huh. Yeah, I can relate to the reflective orbs. Anyone who's painted, you know, Christmas ornaments or Christmas balls, every year all of all my friends and I, we get excited about doing that and we end up painting these things. So I'm very familiar with painting the silver orb, uh, but never something like this within the, the same kind of context that this has. Yeah, there's some really tiny work going on there. Not big expressive brush strokes, but um, very carefully designed and very carefully executed. It has a quiet elegance to it that I really like. If I was one of the judges, I would just throw up my hands and say, okay, not happening today. I'm not going to pick among these people. <laughs> I just can't do it. <laughs> They're all too good. All right, here's the next one. Uh, very different interpretation. Much more um, like a... Uh, um, Someone who's going to draw instead of paint. Picks up the brushes and, and draws instead. It's fun to see the big brush strokes. You know, they're using their whole arm here, not just from the elbow down. And it's almost it almost speaks a little bit as if it's an underpainting in some ways. Like this is what you would do to establish what you were going to paint and then apply some really rich paint on top. But that's not this person's style. So so this is what we have from them today. And it's... it's um, I'm curious to see what the judges have to have to say about it. Well, we're not going to hear what the judges have to say about it, but we won't, if you want to look at the recap, you'll see it there. But it's um, it's it's a good example of the judges wanting something, uh, you know, a good field of really really different things. Here's the next one up. This really is heavy on the greens here. I I really oh I want to color spot a value of orange in there something to kind of warm up that wall of green. It was interesting that what they did was turn away from the observatory and instead uh, concentrate on one orb. And it looks like, I want to say farm machinery, but it can't possibly be. It's probably like some sort of art installation or something that's in black in the foreground. But once again, a diagonal establishes some space so we can go back into space. So again, very, very, there we go. Yeah, I don't know what that thing is, but you can tell it's some sort of metal object. And, you know, in, the, in your pods, you're allowed to, um, you have to stay in your pod, but you can, here's some more detail from that painting. You can stay in your pod, but well, there's some orange in there. But, you know, you're allowed to walk around and get different views. And, and many people will do that and then work from their technological device that they bring with them, either their iPad or their phone. And that's, that's perfectly within the rules. And, and in some ways, you know, you almost have to because, or at least it's, it's a helpful device to have because the weather, you know, they're there for the entire day. They must start in the morning and then after once the judging is, is completed, you can clearly see it's like late afternoon. So the light is going to change even on the most um, calm of days. This is somebody who bit off the whole thing. I mean, they put in as much of the observatory and the orbs as was possible, which is incredibly ambitious. So we've had, we've had at least five really fantastic responses to the challenge. I, I have no idea what I would do, uh, you know, as a judge, absolutely none. Wow, even that little slice 
has just as much excitement as the whole piece does when you pull away. That's something you kind of want in your paintings, isn't it? Not just one spot, but a place where your eye can rest and, and kind of enjoy the small moments in a painting as well. If you look at the great masters, they have, they have a lot of that going on. Yeah. So now the judging begins. Now the judges are going to pick three people that are going to go to the semifinals of this episode. And that would just be impossible. Here they are lined up, getting ready to hear the news of who's going to win. Well, not who's going to win, but who's going to win this episode. And then from this episode, there's our first winner so far, semifinalist of the day. And that makes sense. You know, that's a person that bit off the biggest, biggest mouthful to chew. Um, so I'm really, oh boy, I'm, I don't know what they're going to do. Let's take a look at the next one. It's probably going to be equally great. Oh, wow. Yeah, I remember that one from when we began this recap. Also fantastic. And then there'll be one more. And then what we're going to do is go on and compare the piece that they did, that they um, entered the competition with, with what they did today. And from that, the judges will pick one winner to go on to the semifinals. Oh, look at that. That's so strong. That sky is just gorgeous. Look at the pink coming in, in the sky, where the sky meets the land. It's nearly almost lighter with this, well, almost always lighter where the sky leads, meets the land. There are no absolutes, are there? Not when you start observing nature, there really aren't. Any one of these is going to be a great contestant. I just wish they all could go forward. Now we get to the final judging, and we're going to see uh, the painting that they entered the competition with, along with what they did today. Now, here they are from far away. Those are our three semifinalists for the day. They're good-sized pieces. And look at how cold it was. Oh, my goodness. Have you ever worked outside with cold hands? It's just awful. Oh, well, as you already know, I loved her entry piece, and so I'm not surprised that I love her piece today as well. So I'd love to see her go forward. It's just... They're very different landscapes, but she's very capable of the final commission, especially today. The people who had today, I think have the hardest venue of the season. Oh, the waterfall guy. Ah, great. Oh my gosh. He's, how can they, how can they say no to either one of these people? I, I couldn't do it. I would have to resign. <laughs> I would have to respectfully just resign. <laughs> There's just no way. You can't compare these things. They're equally great. And then, of course, there's one more, and then we'll find out who the final winner is. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. This is so interesting because we're going to have some episodes coming up where we really have a, not painters of this caliber. So to have them all show up on this episode is a little bit heartbreaking because somebody is not going to make it, uh, many people are not going to make it through. But we got to see the art, and we're really lucky for that. And thank you for joining me, and let's find out who the winner is. The winner is... Dun, 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 dun. Oh. Wait a minute. I think this is the woman whose painting I like so much at the beginning. Let's hold on one, one second. Let me see. Did I edit in her entry piece as well? I hope I did, because I think it's her. Let's see. Um, is it? No! Oh my gosh! It's this guy. Oh, with the industrial piece. All right. Well, remember to keep the whites your paper white, your paint's wet. Mass for value, mix for color. See you next time. Okay, bye-bye.